What is going on trash talkers? We are back with another episode for you. In today's video, we're gonna give you our predictions for Super Bowl 56, the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Los Angeles Rams. All that and much more coming your way right now. Hey Trash Talkers, over 85% of you are still not subscribed to the channel. Please be sure to hit that red subscribe button and turn on notifications as it will help us create more daily content for you. Thank you and enjoy today's video. All right, Nick, Super Bowl 56 has been set. We have the Cincinnati Bengals and the Los Angeles Rams. We all knew this would be the uh, matchup, right? No, obviously not. The Cincinnati Bengals are clearly the Cinderella story that the NFL has this season. They have been through it all. I mean, obviously with Joe Burrow coming back from injury and leading this team to an AFC North division title all the way through the playoffs with, through some of the most difficult opponents they could have possibly faced. And then obviously getting it done in Arrowhead Stadium against the Kansas City Chiefs. Not very easy at all. On the other hand, you have the Los Angeles Rams getting it done, taking on the San Francisco 49ers for a third time this season, and finally, finally getting the best of Jimmy G and company. But Nick, why don't you get us started and tell us a little bit about how the Cincinnati Bengals were able to pull off this upset? Yeah, this was a big upset. And after the first half, no one thought that this would be a possibility because in that first half, we saw the Kansas City Chiefs get off to a hot start. But then we saw their defense really find a way to stop Jamar Chase, really lock up Joe Burrow and really not give him many options, getting a lot of pressure from the interior of that offensive line, which we knew was going to be the biggest issue. And Joe Burrow just did not have an answer really to get the Bengals downfield into the end zone. And we saw the Kansas City Chiefs get a nice lead going into that second half though it seems like Joe Burrow Zach Taylor they were able to put together a scheme to get past what the Kansas City Chiefs were trying to do on defense Melvin Ingram was not able to get to Joe Burrow Legereus Sneed was not having the same success in the second half Jamar Chase got out of that hold that the Chiefs defense had on him and he was able to be of use T Higgins got the drop issues out of the way in the first half he really came alive and helped out strong in the second half. Tyler Boyd stepping up. I mean, we saw CJ Uzama go down early in this game, and that was a big loss. They found a way to work around it. Joe Mixon was a key part in this victory, really keeping the defense on their heels because they didn't know if it was a run or pass, keeping the play action alive in this one. It all came to work in the second half, and what led to an incredible come from behind victory for the Cincinnati Bengals, something not many people thought was a possibility but it happened the Kansas City Chiefs fell in overtime when Patrick Mahomes threw that interception we all knew the Cincinnati Bengals had the momentum behind them and they were able to drive down the field kick that short yardage field goal it was an incredible win but the Cincinnati Bengals are showing us each and every time that they play in this playoff that they are playing with house money and they are fearless there is nothing going to stop them they don't care who is in their way they are going to come and play with everything they have because they have nothing to lose. Yeah, the Bengals were absolutely playing with house money, but the house goes to Los Angeles and Los Angeles will now be at home as they take on the Bengals in the Super Bowl. The, the Rams, they had a tough one. Jimmy Garoppolo against the Rams coming into this one, 6-0 against the Los Angeles Rams. That was almost unheard of, but the Rams, they got it done and they were able to use their defense. They were able to get pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo throughout this entire game. Aaron Donald, Von Miller, all of these guys coming in and just absolutely laying the wood. We saw some big plays, big chunk plays here and there for the offense, but Jimmy Garoppolo was held to a very, very minuscule line. 
16 of 30 for 232 yards, two touchdowns, and that costly, costly interception to wrap up the entire NFC Championship game. Jimmy Garofalo, he was exactly who, Nick, you thought he was. He is not clutch. The man can't get it done in tough situations, and he folded. This entire offense was not able to get going because Jimmy G could not lead them. He finally threw touchdowns this postseason, but it was too little too late against the Los Angeles Rams defense that was built to be able to absolutely come after guys like Jimmy G. Now the Rams were able to get things done on the offensive side of the ball themselves. Matthew Stafford, 31 of 45, two touchdowns and an interception himself. Cam Akers started to get going, 13 carries at 48 yards. We saw Cooper Cup absolutely light up the skies once again, 11 catches, 142 and two touchdowns. Odell Beckham Jr. having his first 100 yard receiving game for the first time in 33 professional NFL games. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, I guess Odell Beckham Jr. really wasn't the issue in Cleveland now, was he? Well, that's a different story for a different time. But at this point, the Los Angeles Rams are moving on to Super Bowl 56 because they have one of the most stout defenses in the league. They have one of the most potent offenses that you can possibly offer. Nick, how do the Cincinnati Bengals match with the Los Angeles Rams? Well, as you just said, Cooper Cup had 11 catches for over 140 yards. Last week, he had over 10 catches for 180 yards. This guy has had one incredible postseason, and Cooper Cup is the biggest reason as to why the Los Angeles Rams are where they are. So, for the Cincinnati Bengals going into this matchup, you've got two weeks to now figure out what does Cooper Cup do best? What are his favorite routes? What are his connections? What does he do when the play breaks down? You got to figure this out and figure out how you can stop him for this matchup. Because if you can stop Cooper Cup, then you can stop this offense because it all runs through Cooper Cup. Matthew Stafford seems like he can only get going through this one player. And if he cannot find him, then he does not know what to do and he struggles. And he, when he doesn't have the ground game, and I believe the ground game will be gone in this matchup, I think that Matthew Stafford really will not be able to handle the pressure. And we're going to see Trey Hendrickson, Sam Hubbard really have a field day in this one. Jesse Bates, Von Bell, they were big against the Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to have to come up strong in this one, really hold the deep balls to a minimum. We know Stafford loves them. He's got the weapons to throw the balls. They've got to be the really solidifying factors in that backfield to say, we will not allow that. They've got to make that a no-fly zone. And I think for the Cincinnati Bengals offense, it really starts up front with this offensive line. You've got to stop Aaron Donald. We just saw what happened when Jerron Reed and Chris Jones were coming through the middle. They were able to get a lot of pressure. Didn't get a lot of stacks, but that's because Joe Burrow is figuring out how to move around that pocket extremely well. But Aaron Donald, Von Miller, Leonard Floyd, these guys are going to make it much more difficult than the Kansas City Chiefs did. It's going to be up to this offensive line to really give Joe Burrow time to work in this pocket because because Jamar Chase, just like he was locked up in the first half, he's got Jalen Ramsey. That is one of the toughest matchups Jamar Chase has had in his young career. I need Jamar Chase to become a superstar right now for this to be the game the Cincinnati Bengals hope it to be. They've got to have their superstars really come out in this one, and I need Joe Mixon to be as dynamic as he was in that Chiefs matchup, in that AFC Championship game. These are the keys to success. They don't seem like a lot, but they are they are something that they have not been able to do consistently all season long. They just need to be consistent for 60 minutes more. Listen, the Bengals you talked about earlier playing with house money, and now they have to go to the house where the Rams are honestly on fire. And that would be the Los Angeles Rams being at home the second time in the Super Bowl era that we have seen the host city team in the Super Bowl. The only other time? last year when the Buccaneers did it with Tom Brady in Tampa. Not before that, it's weird to me that we hadn't seen it for 54 years prior and now we have two in a row. But nonetheless, the Matthew Stafford led Los Angeles Rams are here to fight. It was a year ago from January 30th that Matthew Stafford was traded from the Detroit Lions to the Los Angeles Rams. And one year later, he has his team in the Super Bowl. He is leading this team to 
the promised land where they were just a couple of seasons ago, where Jared Goff could not get it done against the New England Patriots. With this offense, with Cooper Cup, the way he's been playing, we know who Matthew Stafford is. He hyper targets his best receiver, and that has been Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup has only played one other game against the Cincinnati Bengals, and while it wasn't this year, he had seven catches for 220 yards and a touchdown. That is not looking pretty for the Cincinnati Bengals, but if they can stop that from happening, then they still have to focus on Odell Beckham Jr. Then they still have to focus on Tyler Higbee. Then they still have to focus on Cam Akers in this running game. This is not a one person offense. I understand that Cooper Cup is gonna get a lot of the defense's focus, but it is not just Cooper Cup on this side of the ball, and there is a lot more to it than just him. On the defensive side of the ball, the Cincinnati Bengals are going to have to figure out, Nick, as you talked about, Aaron Donald and company coming up through the middle of this offensive line. There is a lot of pressure going to be applied to Joe Burrow in this one. I think that the Los Angeles Rams literally have to pin their ears back and just run after this guy. Don't worry about Joe Mixon because your offense can score more than Joe Mixon can on the ground. I fully believe that the Los Angeles Rams are going to have everything going against the passing game for this Joe Burrow-led offense. I think the passing attack is going to take a major hit because he's not going to have time in the pocket. Jalen Ramsey locking down one receiver. It doesn't matter if it's Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, or Jamar Chase. That guy is going to be locked down and it's going to be up to the rest of the defense to hold their water just for a couple of seconds because that's all Aaron Donald needs to eat Joe Burrow alive. All right, guys. Well, the stage has been set. We didn't make predictions, but stay tuned for our videos next week, predictions and bets. Let us know in the comments what you feel like right now. Who do you have, Los Angeles Rams or the Cincinnati Bengals? All right, well, that's gonna be all for now. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. We go live every single day. That'll be all. Peace and love.